Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. This uh, Mujanai here, a Brazilian lancehead, a very large one, and uh, uh, I think from previous videos you've seen how huge she is. Uh, she really sort of needs her cage cleaned a bit, and you can see she's got a little bit of a stuck shedding on her top of her head. I think that will probably come off with just water. Uh, so right now I just want to assess uh, how much of the shedding she still has and uh, uh, decide whether or not I want to pull her out the soaker. Um, I might pull her out uh, after we figure this out and put her in a tub uh, to soak and at the same time I can clean up her cage. Um, uh, Miss Mooch and I is, the, you know, the plan is, or uh, was, um, these were, she was an animal that, uh, uh, I was going to send to the Kentucky Reptile Zoo and because of COVID and, and airline shipping, uh, is quite uncertain in such, uh, and the zoo is sort of shut down, uh, uh, that's on hold. So, you know, I have to maintain her until, uh, this sort of continues and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, getting bit during the COVID crisis is not a good thing. Getting bit at any time at all keeping venomous snakes is a bad idea. Um, it's really bad right now and she is quite, uh, uh, quite a large lance head uh, quite active and as you can see she's laser focused on me because she's expecting food. Now, you know the thought is to sort of delay things a little bit and to fill her mouth with uh, a rat because once she's got something in her mouth uh, it's a little bit more occupied and it's a little easier to work with. The problem is uh, I don't like working with any sort of food items in a room where I plan to clean other cages and do other things because the snakes pick up on the scent of food then they expect if I'm opening that door that food is coming and they're quite active and feeding bites are 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 very bad things to, to take. Uh, if they're pissed off uh, and you get bit, that's bad enough. A feeding strike. These snakes are only interested in killing the food item and they will inject a lot more venom under those circumstances uh, than perhaps a defensive bite unless of course you're standing on the snake hurting them. So we're just going to uh, uh, to try to open things up here, get some of the old shed out, and try to assess uh, what the exact situation is. You can see that she's quite interested in uh, what's going on. Uh, fortunately, this does not have a heat signature, uh, so she's stationary, but I still might move her around with uh, a hook. Uh, maybe inside of her cage just to see uh, what I am working with and you know I don't often bring out the gentle giants because uh, these are considered last resorts sort of thing a little bit of shed left on the tail um, it's a whole lot bad I know you're rattling your tail Oh, you want to keep that tail away from me, huh? Okay, so we're going to open the danger side of the cage here because she has a direct uh, shot at me. And we're 
we're going to try to see what the heck is going on and peel back as we go into total defense. Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, all right, so we're going to stop here a little later today. Um, I'm not so worried about that on top of her head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take care of the other snakes that uh, were gonna, was going to service their cages. Uh, and later today when I break out the food and her mouth is occupied, um, I'm going to go ahead and try to just peel that back a little bit. It's only a small amount. It's certainly not worth dragging her out and soaking her. There's no critical problems there. So um, we're going to wet down her after she eats. She'll love that. And uh, uh, maybe it will come off on its own. Most of the tail has shed out. I'm not so worried about that. Uh, right now safety is paramount. And she is about a five foot lance head uh, with quite a large lance on the end of that head. <laughs> uh, fangs that are probably close to an inch long. Lots of venom which causes uh, tissue destruction and severe coagulopathy. Uh, it is a snake that causes a lot of misery and death in its native Brazil. Um, the best place that I can uh, send her is the Kentucky Reptile Zoo where uh, her venom will be used for uh, research purposes. Uh, uh, Bothrop's uh, Mugenize venom is used in creating a quick clock, clot compound that's used in medical trauma, gunshot wounds. If you have a patient in the field that's bleeding like hell and is not going to make it uh, to the hospital because of blood loss, uh, you inject this material into the wound. Uh, it's a fibrinogen activator and it clots blood and stops bleeding very, very quickly uh, so the patient can uh, be stabilized and make it to the hospital. So very important snakes uh, venom to study. So we will just leave her as she is right now in her slightly pissed off state and we'll appease her by uh, feeding her when, when we're ready to start feeding everybody else in the room. Alright, so Miss Mujanai is next. Um, Ms. Muj and I, uh, I just caught her attention, and as you see, um, it's hardly a mouthful for her, but I'm sure she's very happy to have received it. Uh, this is the Brazilian lance head. Uh, this uh, gal, uh, uh, or this particular species in Brazil, causes quite a, a lot of bites. Um, it's venom fractions. Uh, have very useful medicinal properties uh, including uh, blood pressure, heart medication, uh, they cause uh, clotting of blood um, which can be used in, in severe trauma. Um, the venom component that causes the fibrinogen to mesh uh, is in this compound, they inject it into a, like a chest wound or a gunshot wound and it uh, instantly coagulates the blood and controls the blood loss uh, so you have time to get to the hospital and be treated. So uh, their venom is quite valuable and it's not a snake that you want chasing you across the room either. We can do a better close up. Mr. Snooty Eye. <laughs> yes, he's got the the pecker caught in his throat and can't quite swallow the rest <laughs> of it. <laughs> there we go. Now we got it. 
And you wouldn't want them fangs walking up your hand either. Okay, weasel. I'm not going to use my hands. Weasel. You know, it's just like the game Pop Goes the Weasel because you never know when he's going to go go ballistic. Mr. Weasel. Yeah. See what I mean? <laughs> would you like this? You would. Oh, I thought so. Oh, look at that. We're, right, 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 right. <laughs> we're making sure that that rodent is dead. Huh? Is that tasty, bud? Is this a happy weasel? Yeah, he was off feed for the longest time. You can see his glasses all smeared up. It was mating season, and unfortunately, I, I don't have a mate. Uh, I used to have four or five of these uh, animals, uh, Devoya mortanica, but uh, um, never was able to, to get them to breed. He's uh, the last of a line. So we'll just let him do what he's going to do and shut the door. <laughs> he's <laughs> continuing to masticate the poor thing. Uh, let's check his water Why his mouth is full. He can use some water. And he really did snot up his glass. Yeah. The problem is, it's a bit dangerous to remove that glass and clean it up with him in the cage. There seems another one who needs a trap box. Well, <laughs> I mean, with his mouth full now, I could probably remove the glass and clean it real quick. It, I just don't have the time right now. <laughs> so, so we'll let him uh, masticate his burden. He really, really... <laughs> He loves doing that. You know, other snakes will just bite and hold. He just chews the crap out yeah, of it. He savages them. He just really chomps and chomps and chomps. And I guess he's tenderizing them. Yes, exactly. As if his venom wasn't going to already do that. Okay, so. Sharp-nosed pit viper. From South, uh, Southeast Asia. He's uh, also known as Mr. Snooty Nose because he has this tendency to look down his nose at you. Uh, this is also called the 100 pace snake and it earned its reputation because once bitten, uh, the person would walk uh, 100 paces and fall over and die. Well, I, that's more of a legend. Um, these Snakes have powerful vasodilators to cause their their prey to go into shock rapidly. So, on a human-sized uh, piece of uh, of uh, prey, let's say, the uh, you just sort of faint and pass out because your blood pressure goes low. Oh, you missed, but that time you didn't. So. Uh, the person event eventually normally will, his pressure will come back up um, and hopefully seek medical aid. But uh, uh, these are hand liquefiers. They will liquefy your fingers, hands, or anything that the venom gets into. So um, we don't want to, uh, to get bit by that snake. Uh, I would choose some other snake other than that snake if I had to take a bite from something. Now, Miss Mooj and I. Do I really want to feed you something as big as a rat? 
Last week you had a check. I try to give them a variety of prey items because it uh, is healthier for them. They get a variety of nutrients. Uh, she, of course, is a force to be reckoned with. Um, Brazilian lance heads, uh, again, have powerful vasodilators and these are the snakes that pioneered the, uh, uh, the proteins that became uh, drugs called uh, uh, ACE, ACE inhibitors. They cause lower blood pressure um, uh, because their venom acts on the proteins that control your blood pressure and causing it to uh, uh, uncontrollably f fall and people pass out after they get bit, just like with Mr. Pointy Nose. Uh, but these guys uh, are responsible for saving more people than they actually kill. Uh, so it's a very uh, neat snake and it has a, a nice story and uh, I really need to clean her cage, uh, but that requires uh, um, uh, taking a lot of risk and right now during COVID uh, I don't want to take risks that I don't have to take so um, once her mouth is full and she's sort of occupied maybe disappears into her log a little bit more I will uh, I'll do some uh, pooping scooping and that sort of stuff but for now she's in there and I'm not messing with her so as we can see, Mr. Weasel has really snotted up the, his, his glass because he's been really sort of in breeding mode. I don't know if he's still in breeding mode or not. We will find out here shortly. He's actually refused food for the past few weeks. Uh, so you know that something's up when Mr. Uh, Weasel decides that he's not interested in anything to eat. Um, are you interested in that? Oh, you are! Breeding season must be over. He's given it up. <laughs> he is not, uh... He has taken enough cold showers to uh, quell <laughs> the flames and uh, uh, get back on his feet. And while that mouth is busy, I would really like to sort of get in there with his water dish and stuff uh, and maybe pull out that old shed so we're going to switch it sorry folks it's a little bit ugly but it's the only way I can really sort of work when that mouth is occupied because we don't want to take a bite from him either. Yeah, that's a jaboya, so that would be a bad, bad bite. Moorish vipers have quite a lot of metalloproteases, which causes lots of coagulopathies and tissue destruction. So, yes, that would be very bad indeed. So now that we're so now we can uh, watch him uh, eat since I was able to. Uh, Get a fresh water dish in there for him and uh, get uh, his old shed out. And typical Du Bois, a really beautiful pattern. Oh, yes, yes. Beautiful color. He's a lovely snake. Uh, again, he's another animal that I've had for years and years. Uh, actually, I had several Moorish vipers. Um, Unfortunately, they were lost in the great uh, uh, snake 
plague in 2008 and 9, uh, where I lost an untold number of, of animals uh, uh, due to paramyxo.